Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm a natural areas technician with the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves, and today I'm out here at one of our shortleaf pine restoration sites. Shortleaf pine restoration is one of our largest ongoing management projects, with management strategies being implemented on three different sites across the state. We were able to establish this project with the help of funding from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation's Cumberland Plateau Stewardship Fund. This project is being done in collaboration with the Shortleaf Pine Initiative which launched back in 2013 in response to the dramatic decline of shortleaf pine systems across the U.S. Over the past 30 years, there's been over a 50% loss of acreage of these systems. The aim of Kentucky Nature Preserves is to improve not only the missing or stressed shortleaf pine component of these sites, but also the associated assemblages of plants and animals that thrive in these open woodland systems. Kentucky Nature Preserves currently tracks and monitors 21 species of state-listed threatened or endangered plants that are associated with these pine oak barrens. The decline of shortleaf can be contributed to a variety of factors including logging, land conversion, pine beetle infestation, and fire suppression. Fire suppression in particular has played a large role in the decline of shortleaf due to its ability to effectively alter the species composition of these systems. You see, shortleaf pine is a fire adapted species and is able to thrive with periodic fire across the landscape. A couple of its unique adaptations include the thick plate-like bark that protects the cambium of mature trees and the sharp basal crook that falls just along the soil surface that allows saplings to re-sprout quickly following top kill during fire events. Without fire, shortleaf pine can be quickly outcompeted by faster growing fire intolerant species such as red maple, sourwood, black gum, and tulip poplar. Over time, this allows for fewer and fewer individuals to be recruited into the overstory, and as the canopy begins to close entirely, recruitment drops to near zero. That is the stage of the system in which I am currently standing. If you take a look around me here, you'll notice mature shortleaf scattered throughout the area while it has little to no presence in the mid and understory. Kentucky Nature Preserves is not only dedicated to reintroducing fire to these systems through the use of prescribed burning, but is also jump-starting the restoration process using both manual and mechanical means. The unit in which I'm currently standing was completed in early 2019 using both chainsaws and herbicide. Undesirable trees over 8 inches were girdled and basil treated, while those under 8 inches were felled and stump treated. Alright, so I just wanted to give you a demonstration of the manual method we use when completing these short leaf pine management units, and here I've got a red maple tree I've just girdled. Girdling is an effective technique for killing both mid and overstory trees because it cuts off the nutrient flow between the tree's canopy and root system. When girdling, we like to cut two complete rings around the tree's trunk, and we don't need to cut very deep because most of the nutrient flow happens toward the tree surface. We also like to cut those two rings around 10 to 12 inches apart, and that's so that we don't compromise that tree's structural integrity. Uh, we want these trees to remain standing, and that's beneficial to us in two ways. It ensures that we don't increase our fuel loading too much before we come back through these units with a prescribed fire, and standing dead trees also provide valuable habitat for a variety of species. Uh, depending on the tree species, girdling can take quite a while to fully kill the tree, which is why we like to supplement our girdling with an herbicide treatment, and we apply that into both the girdled rings we've cut into the tree. And I haven't treated this tree yet, so I'll show you what that looks like right now. So when we come across trees that are too small to safely girdle, we utilize what is called the cut stump method. This is where we fell the tree and cut the stump as low as possible before then applying herbicide directly to the stump. Uh, this tree was of the size that I just coated the outside edge of the stump with herbicide because that's where most of the absorption takes place. But if I cut anything much smaller than this, I'll go ahead and coat the entire stump with herbicide. Uh, something else I'd like to point out is that this herbicide application in both the girdling and cut stump method uh, will help prevent these trees from resprouting, and that, alongside the use of prescribed fire, uh, allows us to keep expanding the number and size of these units because once they're established, the maintenance of them is relatively low. More recently, we've been using this piece of machinery in several of our units. This is a skid steer with a mulching head attachment that allows it to fell trees up to eight inches in diameter. 
We've chosen to use it in several of our units where the understory was too thick to efficiently thin using manual means. Okay, so I'm currently standing in one of the units completed using the skid steer. I'd like to point out that we were very selective when choosing which units to bring this piece of machinery onto. We chose to only use it on units where this open woodland pine barren system had degraded to the point that the mid and understory were so thick that it wouldn't have been a practical use of time or resources to try to complete it manually. All right, so here's a better look at this unit that was completed using the skid steer. It allowed us to quickly cover a lot more acreage than we can do manually, but we will have to return to these units to girdle and treat the larger undesirable trees that the machinery was unable to fill. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about one of our ongoing management projects here at Kentucky Nature Preserves. I'll leave you now with a few images of some of our management units.